day two at Sea Airspace 2018. Today we're focusing on some of the latest naval defense technologies from the United States, such as unmanned surface vehicles, laser weapon systems, as well as some new ship concepts. This is the first time that we've showcased our fourth generation common unmanned surface vehicle uh, in its um, physical form. So at trade shows we've had our booth and our model, but this is the first year that we've showcased the actual fourth generation CUSV. It's an unmanned surface vehicle that's used um, for a variety of mission sets. The first mission that it's going to perform under contract with the U.S. Navy is for mine sweeping. Uh, so back in 2014, we were awarded a contract by the U.S. Navy to integrate a uh, unmanned influence sweep system uh, payload package onto the back of the common unmanned surface vehicle. Right now, today, we're in the phases of completing our contractor testing, and then we will move into developmental testing, which is a U.S. Navy-led event, uh, culminating in a milestone C later this year. Our solution um, has been um, developed over a number of years, starting in 2008. Uh, we started working on this concept. We took our command and control technologies from the air domain, which Textron has a, a large history in, and then we migrated that down to the maritime domain. Uh, so it was a, a good core capability of command and control, and a very reliable and robust um, unmanned surface vehicle. Some of the key advantages of our of our surface vehicle is the large and large and open payload bay that it has. So it's a very modular and um, uh, payload agnostic uh, sort of pickup truck of the sea that then multiple uh, payloads can be installed on very quickly. Uh, what you see on there today behind me is a mine hunting payload. So we're demonstrating that beyond just mine sweeping, this platform can also do mine hunting. Uh, we're actively working with the U.S. Navy producing two craft uh, that will be used to demonstrate mine hunting capabilities. And then in the future, we envision it being used for mine neutralization, surface warfare packages, and really anything else that you can imagine. Our model on our booth, we are also demonstrating um, the capability of um, a vertical fire uh, launched Hellfire. Um, it's a um, kind of a model, kind of a proof of concept uh, realm of the possible. Um, so we are working with our partners at Dahlgren, which is a Navy lab, uh, to investigate uh, other payloads, um, both direct and indirect fire. Lockheed Martin is very pleased to, to have the opportunity to partner with the U.S. Navy to bring this capability to the fleet to protect the sailors and to provide increased intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance capability to the ship. Helios brings three different capabilities to the ship. Firstly, it's a high energy laser weapon system. Secondly, it brings an enhanced intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance capability. And it provides that data directly back to the Aegis combat system. And then thirdly, there is a Dazzler capability to be able to overcome adversaries' ISR capabilities from drone platforms. What you see on the screen is a notional representation of where a Helios system may be integrated on the ship. The Helios system power level is 60 kilowatt class and up. And we're very happy to be partnering with the Navy on this effort and also leveraging the great success that the Navy has had in the past with the LAWS system, which was deployed on the USS Ponce. And because of the time that that system spent on the ship and the success of that system, we and the Navy are able to move forward with the Helios program. The Volcano system is a precision guided munition that is a subcaliber round 
which means that the diameter of the projectile itself is slightly smaller than the bore size of the weapon it's being fired out of. The advantage of that is you get a much higher muzzle velocity and therefore an extended range. And a unique feature of the Volcano family of munitions is that the tail fins and the canards are pre-deployed. So you don't have complex deployment mechanisms to deploy those after your fire. They're already deployed and this is encased in a, uh, a sabot to protect them as it goes through the handling system and out the muzzle. With the, uh, the five inch variant we're uh, displaying here, out of Mark 45, you're in excess of 90 kilometers. And from the 155 AGS, it's in excess of 100 kilometers. And those are fairly conservative numbers. We believe that this system has a lot of design margin that we could increase that muzzle velocity and extend that range even further. In addition, the guidance system is GPS as a baseline, but we've also tested versions with an infrared seeker and a semi-active laser. And that addresses uh, moving targets both on land and at sea. So long range, over the horizon shots, uh, you can address with those two capabilities. Surprisingly, when we looked at this architecture, it was fairly seamless in the integration into both AGS and Mark 45. It was a natural fit. And the fact that it's a subcaliber round gives us flexibility to accommodate this system into those weapons. Larry, uh, you're showcasing two new concepts this year at uh, CR Space. Can you tell us about them? Yeah, so the first one we're introducing is a medical variant of the, uh, the high-speed vessel program, the uh, EPF program now. The, um, the concept is you've got shallow draft, high speed, and a lot of volume. Um, so we think that it augments the other medical capabilities for the, uh, for the services. It's able to get in close, move into position quickly to respond to a... Uh, a humanitarian assistance or disaster relief operation requirement, it's, uh, you can move it to support a raid. So we're looking for something small and agile and fast that can provide that level of uh, trauma care forward, um, get the troops on board, stabilized, and then use the flight deck, which we're looking to enhance with the a V-22 capability and fly them off. So it, uh, it's a nice fit. You know, the, uh, the current hospital ships are very capable, but they're big and slow and take a long time and a lot of people to get into, um, into operation, whereas this, you could fly a team on board, fall in on existing medical gear, and um, provide that treatment very quickly to respond in the immediate need. So, The operator would be uh, Military Sea Lift Command or the U.S. Navy? Probably a Military Sea Lift Command like they are now. It, you know, it could be operated either way. However, the Navy you know, wants to keep going with that concept. but. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's the same basic ship that we're operating now, or building now for the Navy and Military Sea Lift Command is operating. So. so this is another concept we're rolling out, looking for um, for ways that we can meet the needs of the uh, of the Navy and the different uh, communities in the, uh, in the U.S. military in particular. This is a variant of a. Um, a trimaran, obviously a different hull design that we think is well suited for uh, special operations missions. The, uh, the intent of this ship is, again, we've got the aviation capability, but we've also enhanced the, uh, the boat launch and recovery. You see it's uh, closer to the waterline, so you've got uh, a, an easier and, and more rapid way to launch and recover small boats, run aviation missions. You've got some, um, you know, a little bit of self-defense and capability as well as some offensive punch in a fairly small um, ship. So again, it's using the, uh, the strengths of the trimaran to uh, get you the speed and the sea keeping and the fuel efficiency and uh, provide a different capability for the, for the, uh, the soft community in particular for this variant.